We have a hunger problem in this country. Uh, and we had a hunger problem, quite frankly, even before the pandemic. Uh, now over 50 million of our fellow citizens don't know where their next meal is gonna come from. Uh, and I think all of us uh, should be ashamed by, ashamed by that fact. Have you ever been nice to anyone but think they only want you for what you have? Feels bad, right? I wonder how the politicians in Washington, D.C. feel. Government funding has been a hot topic in politics for a long time, but as of late, it has spiked significantly with the rise of COVID-19. But before we get into all that, let's get to the basics. Government funding is defined on Google as any grant, loan, or other financial assistance for any federal, provincial, or municipal government or government agency. This can range from local governments to research facilities to colleges or universities, nonprofit organizations, and people in need. There are two different types of funds, loans and grants. Loans are money for personal benefit or use that needs to be repaid by the recipient. Student aid, home repairs, or disaster assistance are examples of loans. Grants are money for projects used to benefit the community that does not need to be repaid by the recipient. Support of local schools or scientific research are examples of grants. There are many programs and organizations that help with the funding, such as the United States of Department of Health, Department of Education, Department of Housing, and Department of Homeland Security, just to name a few. But ones we're focusing on now are the SNAP and EBT programs that help poor citizens. SNAP benefits uh, are help to provide low-income households with nutrition assistance and increasing their household's food purchasing power and really working to help uh, supplement that family's food budget. And so EBT is the actual card in which benefits um, is the electronic benefits transfer. So it looks like a debit card. Uh, and so we use the EBT card for uh, dispersing those funds out to families. The way that um, SNAP benefits are determined is based on the number of individuals in the household and also the total in income that's earned. What this allows people to do is purchase food items that they might not otherwise have resources to purchase with and then be able to use their other resources for really needed things like um, rent, mortgage, uh, utilities, phone, transportation. We want the ability to enforce really what was has been on the book since the welfare reform of 1996, but we cannot do that uh, with the waiver process as it is. I'm a former governor. I can tell you if I'm a governor with no skin in the game, it's not costing me anything, I'm going to do everything I can to maximize federal payments into my state, and that's what's going on. So how does this affect the government? They set a certain budget every year and they divide the money they spend into sections such as education, healthcare, national defense, funding, and much more. When they spend money over their original agreed budget by increasing the debt ceiling, it increases the national debt. An increase in the national debt affects us by lower national savings and income, higher interest payments, which means higher taxes and hurts the economy. South Carolina Senator John Scott says the budget plays a large part in government decisions regarding the spending of money. Any other government entity, that's what runs that operation. That's what funds the various departments and the various agencies. If you don't have a budget, you can't pay employees, and you won't have money to make sure those agencies actually run. The budget is not going down, and the budget is increasing, and that's why you're looking at the national debt continue to increase. You're taking in, in essence, you're taking in less money than you're spending out. Although it helps many poor people across the country, there is a huge problem with EBT programs. EBT fraud is a major issue that plagues these programs. Examples of fraud can be falsifying applications for EBT benefits, not reporting the correct amounts of household members, not reporting the correct amount of household income, and trafficking EBT benefits such as trading or selling cards for cash, alcohol, and eligible non-food items or illegal drugs. Also, with the amount of money and free food people receive, EBT benefits may unmotivate some people to want to work, increasing the unemployment rate. This forms the growing argument that EBT benefits are a waste of taxpayers' dollars. For people who politically want to hurt the program, they're more than happy to perpetuate those kinds of misstatements and misinformation in order to do what their ultimate goal is, which is to take um, services away from people in need. We just want to make sure that we're providing benefits to those who are eligible for them here at the agency. And we also want to reduce improper payments. Uh, can be a result of either client error or our agency error or folks 
who are entering the data or can be um, an intentional program or in violation and those are fraud. And working with law enforcement and providing training on how they can spot, investigate, and really refer to us for prosecution of retailers or maybe individuals that are committing SNAP fraud in their community. EBT programs are good for society as it makes food affordable and leaves less than American people hungry. But unfortunately, poverty is such a big issue in America that the EBT programs operate on a state level rather than a national level. We are asking politicians to work for taking more control in these programs so that the programs are used in their full potential and more people are guided to the right direction in life. So remember, the next time you receive a gift, take into consideration how the other person giving it may feel. You never know, it may benefit you too.